how to become a pharmacist. I get asked this question a lot. So I'm gonna break down my entire pharmacy journey from high school all the way to residency up until now. All right, let's get started. So you can skip to whatever chapter is relevant to you or you can watch the whole video, up to you. So high school, really when the seed was planted. I really loved biology, chemistry, and I was really good at calculus or math. So this is when the seed was planted. I started to wonder, hmm, maybe I can pursue healthcare. What if I became a pharmacist? In high school, I would say I was one of those typical hardcore, hardworking students. You know, I was really involved. I was in volleyball all four years, in track and field for three years. I was president of our Vietnamese association org, taking AP classes. Yeah, I was one of those go-getters. Because at the time, I was so stressed as a high school student, I really, really wanted to get into my dream college, UCLA. And it all worked out because I got in. I majored in biochemistry. Like I said, I like biology, I like chemistry, I couldn't decide. Learned that there was a major that combined the two of them, so I figured why not. So honestly, all you need to do is fulfill the course requirements and pass the classes you need um, to apply to pharmacy school. Let's say my major was biochemistry, right? But some of my pharmacy schools that I was applying to, you know, they have a lot of different course requirements that might not be a part of your major. So for example, one pharmacy school requires that we take an econ class. So I ended up taking a random econ elective course. And a lot of them uh, require an anatomy course. And anatomy is not part of my biochemistry course. Um, so I ended up taking summer school, a um, course on anatomy. There's a lot of people that I got to pharmacy school with much easier majors. You know, you don't have to suffer and go through such a difficult major just to get to this path. At the same time, it did prepare me well, so, you know, pros and cons. So college is when essentially I figured, hey, let's, let's water this seed. Let's see how it grows. So during college, I still had the idea in mind, huh, what if I became a pharmacist? So what better way to know is to get experience. I joined a pharmacy organization on campus pre-farm society. Within that organization, they were associated with um, a hospital nearby. It was a long-term care facility and they were looking for pharmacy students with pharmacy technician licenses. I quickly got my license, studied for the tests, took the exam and passed, and applied for a volunteer position and got it. So I pretty much volunteered at a long-term care pharmacy for about three years or so. What I did there as a volunteer was that I bubble packed um, a lot of the medications there for the patients. So the patients that pretty much reside there were long-term elderly patients who had skilled nurses on the unit to help you know, give them their medications. So everything, all of their medications, every single one of them was bubble packed into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday for the nurses. And once a month, we had to do monthly audits. So we would just check um, the units, make sure that you know the nurses were appropriately giving the medications, nothing was missed, everything was stored correctly, and nothing was expired, etc. And that was a great opportunity for me to really gain experience about pharmacy, learn what pharmacists do, talk to the pharmacists there, see if they like their job, and I really loved it. So I knew that when I was going to apply eventually for pharmacy school, I needed three letters of recommendation. So I figured, so at that long-term care pharmacy, I can get one letter of recommendation, but I really wanted to maximize more, you know, gain more pharmacy experience, get another letter from another pharmacist. So I figured, why, why don't I try another program and get another experience under my belt? So there was also a separate program on our campus. Um, I forgot what it's called, but essentially all the pre-med students, pre-pharmacy, every healthcare student possible was part of this organization. It essentially allows you to volunteer at the Ronald Reagan Hospital and they would split you into different units on the nursing floors and you pretty much help out at the front desk. And if you do it long enough, after a semester or two, I forget the requirements, they allow you to pick, select the department that you want to volunteer at. 
So then eventually I was a volunteer at the outpatient pharmacy for about a year or two. And eventually that was my sec second letter of recommendation. Third letter of recommendation was going to be from a professor. So overall you can see, you know, I got a lot of pharmacy experience. Um, I was really fortunate to have had a very unique pharmacy experience working at a long-term care pharmacy. And you know, I truly did love my biochemistry courses despite being so difficult. It just, everything just further solidified. I think I'm in the right path. So now pharmacy school. This is where the plant is fully grown, but is now wilting because I was stressed. Pharmacy school is no joke. It was probably the most difficult, stressful time of my life. You know, I don't, I'm trying to be as real as possible. It's not an easy four years. Let me break down pharmacy school and why it could be so stressful. So, you know, in college, you pick your own schedule, you pick your courses. You know, sometimes you have some gaps in between, you take a break, you can catch up with your friends. For pharmacy school, it's a set course. You're in lecture from eight o'clock, nonstop, all the way to four or five o'clock. And I'm not kidding. And you see the same people, you see the same spot every single day. So it can be very monotonous. And with pharmacy, it's very competitive. So I've mentioned before in my other videos, there is a saturation problem. You know, more and more pharmacy schools are opening up, meaning there's more and more pharmacists graduating, so more competition. So in order for you to really stand out, it's really important that you get a pharmacy internship or job while you're in pharmacy school. So at my pharmacy school, a lot of us worked and we all worked on the weekends. So as you can see, it's pretty stressful um, and you can easily get burnt out during, during this time. Short four years of torture and it was worth it. So I have another video that breaks down um, my pharmacy school experience like P1, P2, P3, P4 year. But here I'll just summarize what I think is important during pharmacy school. So one, I already mentioned the internship and pharmacy experience. Work experience is really good. It can go a very long way because oftentimes, you know, if you, you're there for three or four years, the pharmacy department loves you. You know, if a job opportunity opens up, of course they're gonna hire their interns over some random stranger, right? So that one's a good networking experience too. Two, um, I actually joined a pharmacy fraternity. And it's funny because when you think fraternity, you think those stereotypical movies in college. But with pharmacy school, I think the pharmacy fraternities are actually really important to help establish networking for jobs. And honestly, just having some kind of support system because I made a lot of great friends in my pharmacy fraternity and we all helped out each other so much during exam season, during um, appy rotations, during interview seasons and residency applications, the whole nine yards. And three, your appy rotations are very, very important. Why? Because during those appy rotation years, you have to put your best foot forward. So try to do well, don't burn any bridges because those um, appy rotations are a good opportunity to showcase how great you are, how, what great of a candidate you are for potential residency programs if that, you know, hospital rotations that you have you're working at has a residency program. If they like you and they know that you are a good student, then obviously you have an advantage over other students who are applying that they've never seen before. Or let's say you're a really good appy student and they happen to have a job opening right when you finish. Boom, opportunity there for you too. You to do well during your appy rotations. So oftentimes you're gonna get quizzed, pop quiz by your preceptor. You're not gonna have a computer next to you to you know, look up information. So you gotta be prepared. Or sometimes you're on rounds with doctors and medical residents and they ask you a question. And again, you don't have a computer then it's really important to have some kind of reference at your pocket. So this is what I did. Essentially go to Dollar Tree, um, get those photo album booklets, and I pretty much just printed little guidelines or protocols in here, um, lecture notes, lecture slides, things that are relevant that I think you know might pop up or things I need to reference. And this fit perfectly in my white coat. And yeah, it helped me a lot during my app rotations and my preceptors were impressed that I was ready. So let's say if you don't want to 
make your own, I actually sell a bunch of these that I created in my Etsy shop. So the link is down below. I was getting a lot of requests from people, from different pharmacy students. So I decided, hey, why not? So I went through all my old notes, what things I would personally have on hand as a pharmacist or pharmacy student, just in case. And it's all in my Etsy book or Etsy shop down below. And then residency. So this is when the plant is fully thriving. It's watered perfectly. Soil is given so much love. And essentially this is where I was the happiest. Now in order to be a licensed pharmacist, you need to pass two board exams. One is the NAPLEX, which is the National Clinical Board Exam for pharmacists. The second one is some sort of law exam depending on what state you're working at. So I am based on California, so I take the CPG. For those that are taking CPG, I have to give you a warning that um, it's very, very different from the M MPJE, which is for all the other states. So for some reason, California, their law exam actually doesn't have much emphasis on law. So it's only a small chunk of the exam, but a good portion of the exam is very, very clinical, very tricky. So oftentimes I hear that patient or people, pharmacists from out of state, they come in and take our CPJE and they fail. And it takes them a couple tries. Just because it's so different from the MPJE, they expect it to be more law focused, but it really isn't. So for my advice for those taking both NAPLEX and CPJE, try to um, schedule them very close together. Just because while your clinical knowledge is fresh from taking the NAPLEX, in between taking the NAPLEX and CPGE, you can just quickly review all the law portions in between. And you won't have to review all that clinical knowledge all over again. The RX Prep book as a guide. So essentially I just broke down the chapters to you know, however weeks and months that were leading up to my exam. The law exam, I use this book. So the RX Prep, I believe has like online question banks that you can buy that's for both um, NAPLEX and CBGE and I highly recommend those. Um, I pretty much just crammed all the question bank questions right before my exams and that helped me a lot. So during this time for my residency program, um, it was a hospital that had both inpatient acute care rotations and also ambulatory care like clinic rotations good mixture between the two of them and I wanted to see for myself okay which one which path should I go and of course you have experience in both when you do abby rotations but it's such a short course and I really wanted to be sure 100% so by the end of it I ended up really loving inpatient um, a little bit more than ambulatory care and there happened to have been a graveyard opening so I applied and yeah, you're thinking graveyard that sounds terrible but I was very lucky in the sense that it wasn't a full-time like all year round 365 days at graveyard it was only a six month rotation six months on and then six months off then you'll be on days and with that opportunity I took it as much as I could because I really loved my residency program I loved the hospital where I was at and I wanted to stay and it worked, ended up working out because I only did six months of graveyard. And while I was on days, there happened to be an opening for a full day position. So I applied it and I ended up getting it. Now currently I'm a full day pharmacist, um, full-time float pharmacist, meaning I flow around different areas of the hospital depending on where they need me. And my shifts are usually 7.30 to four or 10 to 6.30 or three to midnight. 